I ended up giving Air of Fire a 4.5 out of 5 and Queen of Showers... Queen of Showers? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and turn on your post notifications so you don't miss any of my uploads. I hope you all had an amazing reading month in March and I'm so excited to be filming my March wrap up for today because I'm so excited to share that I read 11 books in the month of March. Because as you can also see in the title of this video, I read over 3,600 pages. I think that is insane. I can't believe it, but I'm also just so proud of myself right now. Honestly, my reading month for the month of March was just definitely a roller coaster of emotions. I was going through different genres, different grade levels for reading, different books. I mean, obviously different books. They all definitely put me through the works in terms of how I was feeling. And I'm glad to say that I had a lot of good reads for the month of March. Before I even begin rambling, let's talk and reach our many any endings. If you haven't checked out my March TBR video, it'll be linked up here and in the description box for you. But I am so excited to say that I read almost every single book that I said I was going to read first book on my March TBR list was Amari and the Night Brothers and y'all I was so late to reading this I should have read it when it came out because I absolutely love this book I knew I was gonna love this book obviously I rated it a 5 out of 5 if you don't own Amari if you don't plan on reading Amari I need you to change all your plans and pick up this book and read it because I guarantee you you will fall in love with this book in this book, we follow Amari Peters, just a young girl living her day to day. However, one day her brother, Quentin, goes missing. At this point of the book, her brother has been missing for quite some time now, and she mysteriously finds a suitcase in his closet. And what is in that suitcase? It is a nomination for her to go to the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs, try out as a new agent, and hopefully find some clues as to why her brother is missing in the first place, because this was the last group last place last people to see her brother as you know it's not called the bureau of supernatural affairs for no reason in here and in this world there are magicians fairies magical creatures beasts and in the bureau amari herself finds out that she holds a magical power honestly if you are in a slump amari is the best book to pick up if you're looking for a book amari is also the best book to pick up get amari it's great it's fantastic you're gonna have a great time i promise you starting off my month with this book was was the best thing ever and i'm pretty sure i can credit this book this read to the rest of the month of having fantastic reads as well because the next book that i ended up reading is turn of the key by ruth ware i ended up buddy reading this with mare for mare reads and we actually have an entire live stream where we read this from start to finish we didn't intend to have the live stream then entire reaction to the entire book however we ended up finding that we read at the same pace and we were able to finish it so if you want to see the full reactions are thoughts you can check out that live stream i'll link it in the description box below however this is a mystery slash thriller that follows a babysitter who took a new job at this house filled with all the updated technology it's basically a smart home and she's charged with now taking care of kids who have had many other nannies in the previous years as well when she applied for this job and when she took this job she had the understanding that this was like the perfect family the ideal family the kids were all amazing they're smart and we'll be behold a tragedy happens and one of the kids ends up dead and she is now charged with the murder this was such a great book such a quick read and i honestly recommend this if you're just getting into thrillers or mysteries it was so quick to understand plot definitely pulled you in and the ending isn't too surprising but i definitely was not expecting that if you're looking for a new mystery or thriller to pick up i definitely suggest this i gave this a four to five and i think mare also gave this a four out of five so definitely a solid book to pick up and i tell y'all march definitely made me go through a roller coaster of emotions i literally went from amari being happy wholesome then a mystery where i was like "Ooh, somebody got murdered my experience reading those two books was like the kitty ride at the amusement park and now i just jumped straight to like the most scariest ride and that had to be chain of iron by cassandra claire when i tell y'all i was so stressed i was just distraught i was a lot of things but needless to say i loved it i don't want to say too much about the synopsis but i just want to say that i thoroughly enjoyed Enjoyed this book. I loved this book more than I love Chain of Gold. I have a reaction video, I 
think from a very long time ago not a very long time ago but it's like when i just started booktube you can check that out if you want to but again it was very early on into my booktube experience so i don't know how qualified i am at that time i say that like i'm qualified now however i gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 it was amazing i love the characters it's so so distraught it's like i can't even explain to you what this book made me feel i just it was a lot i ended up buddy reading this with mel from mel reads and towards the end we caught up with each other and we were reading it and just reacting to it and it was just a whole experience we were on facetime just freaking out crying and i just want to say you need to pick up this book i mean pick up this book like after you read the first book which is chain of gold but oh my god y'all this book is so good you're like well you gave it a 4.5 one out of five if you love it but i thought the beginning kind of third of the book was a little bit slow for me but you know once it got picking back up in the scenes it was just phenomenal i was just very distraught and i ended up crying in a scene well crying to me is like one tear but you know that happened and i just i just gotta recommend this book last thing i'll say about this book and about the synopsis is matthew fairchild matthew fairchild matthew matthew <laughs> matthew Okay, so that's my, yeah, that's that's it. That's it for Chain of Gold. Next few books I read is actually for a upcoming video that I have not filmed yet, but you'll see it sometime later. So I'm not gonna get too into the synopsis or why I even picked out this book, because that'll be for that video. I ended up reading two graphic novels, and when I initially bought it, I didn't know anything about the synopsis because of the video that I was planning, but I thought it was gonna be like a wholesome IA middle grade graphic novel it did not end up being that way it was very graphic and it definitely told a historical and important part of history specifically chinese history which i didn't know about when i initially bought the book but i'm so glad that i did because it was an amazing book and those two books are called boxers and saints these two graphic novels are companion novels to one another and they are super dope. They talk about and discuss the Boxer Rebellion that happened in China and one perspective is from the rebellion side and one perspective is from those who converted into Christianity during this time, which is actually what prompted the Boxer Rebellion. What happened was that Western foreign missionaries were going into a Chinese community in order to spread and convert those into Christianity. So during that time, there were groups of people that wanted to convert and then there were groups of people who were saying that these missionaries had ill intent and that they wanted them gone and rid from their communities. So these perspectives are told by two young kids that are in these two different categories, communities, and perspectives. And I thought it was super dope. It was very graphic. Like I said, I thought this was like a wholesome middle grade. It was not like that, but honestly, I'm grateful because I definitely got to learn more about the history, which I really appreciated. But it also had some magical realism incorporated within the story. I won't give my full review and rating because I want to save it for that video. The other book that I read for that video is How's Moving Castle. I started reading this on a live stream and everyone was like, I love How's Moving Castle. It's such a great book. It's such a great middle grade. All I'm going to say is I currently DNF'd it and you're just going to have to wait for that video to come out when I talk about all three of these books. Now speaking of books I DNF'd, another book that I read in March that I ended up not finishing and kind of don't want to finish but I need to finish it because you all actually told me to read this in my say yes to the book series if you haven't seen that i'll link it in the description below but that is a channel series where you guys get to recommend me books under a certain prompt and ember in the ashes was in this month's prompt and i just I'm currently at page 244 and I can certainly say that I am not liking this book. Before I even joined booktube, I knew what an ember in the ashes was. Everyone was raving about it. People at Barnes and Nobles were always recommending this book to me and I never picked it up until now. Well, actually I had this book for a while, but I never picked it up to read it until now. I can say I feel like I wasn't missing out. I just don't enjoy the writing. There's so much telling and not showing and I have a issue with that because there's there are certain moments where it would feel like it's not climactic anymore. I don't know how to say it, but there were important moments in these characters' development to the story where it felt like I was just being told this, but I was like, oh wow, like we need to stop and we need to unpack because what? Like the, it was like very apparent that there's something traumatic that like definitely triggered and impacts the character but there was no breakdown or even analysis or even thoughts of how the characters were interpreting these situations which i thought was interesting and so i felt like the writing for me wasn't enjoyable because i felt like nothing was really happening then because i was just getting told that 
things were occurring and this affected a character but not really telling me how i'm not really enjoying it so far but i will try to finish it this month it's just really dnf for me at the moment but i need to upload that video for y'all so here we are i don't know what to do like what I don't know. I just, I want to love it, but I don't know. I'll probably read this. I have the second book. I might read that one to see if it gets better, but yeah, so far I'm not having great reactions to An Ember in the Ashes right now. But the next book I read is actually also a part of the Say Yes to the Book channel series, and that is A Song of Race and Ruin, which you all recommended me under this prompt as well. I was supposed to read this back when it came out, but here we are. I'm so glad I read this. I also read this along with the audiobook on Scribd. If you haven't heard of Scribd, it's an audiobook service and platform where you can read audiobooks for free. I have a link down in the description box if you want to join for free as well I've been loving audiobooks so i thought i would mention that but i read a song of race and ruin with the audiobook and it was phenomenal the narrator is super dope i also wanted to listen to the audiobook of this book because there were words in here that i wanted to get the pronunciation right so i was really glad that i did that and it was just so immersive i was so drawn into the city drawn into the characters drawn into the world there are trials that happen i love trials there's a betrayal that happens love betrayals and there's also a dual pov which i absolutely love so overall i highly recommended this book i had a great time one of the povs in this book follows a boy named malik whose little sister has now been taken and he has to enter these trials in order to kill the crown princess at the time in order to save his sister but of course the other pov that we get is the crown princess herself who has now lost her mother and now she's hosting these trials in order to award a winner the crown of king and she's crowning them king so that she can kill kill him get the heart of a king and it just comes a mess y'all some of the trigger warnings that are listed for this book includes self-harm parent death emotional and physical abuse as well as anxiety and panic attacks so if you are triggered by this content i would just be careful and sensitive of giving yourself grace as well when you approach this story i keep forgetting the rating but i ended up giving a 4.5 out of 5 to this book as well now the next books that i read were actually a part of the 24 hour readathon which i have a whole vlog on if you want to see it i'll link it up here and in the description box for you because i have all the reactions if you didn't know myself mel from mel reads jaleesa from bound and bookmarked and kristen from books and more with kristen g we host a monthly 24 hour readathon for this one i thought it would be smart to try to binge the rest of the throne of glass series i was not able to binge the entire series however i did read air of fire and queen of shadows in the 24 hours they're definitely thick books so i was like i'm proud of myself still I don't want to spoil anything in this video but again if you want to see my reactions to uh, both of these books i'll link the vlog in the description box but i will say air of fire definitely my book i love this book i love the concepts and the discussions that were brought on this book the narratives surrounding mental health i just absolutely adored i just this is just my baby now i ended up giving air of fire a 4.5 out of 5 and queen of showers queen of showers queen of shadows a four out of five the last book that i read in march is actually a book that i still have not finished and i also read during the 24 hour readathon because i needed a break between air of fire and queen of shadows because it was honestly overwhelming for me reading sarah j mass books especially ones that were so centered on mental health at 4 a.m was honestly just emotionally taxing so i tried to take a break and listen to the audiobook of sadie which is a mystery slash thriller here y'all have seen this book and if you had thought of reading it or want to read it i highly suggest reading the audiobook it's so immersive it has background noises it has voice altering the experience of reading it with the audiobook is just so dope there are parts where there are like police scanners and you can hear like the distortion in people's voices there are also dual narrators from the girl's perspective as well as the person who reported that this girl was missing i just highly recommend it if you do want to read sadie i'm trying to finish it as i speak so i I just really highly suggest y'all do that because i'm having a great time but okay those were all the books that i read in march let me know in the comment section down below which books that you all read because i'm definitely interested and i'm always trying to add things to my endless tpr that i never end up reading however we're gonna change that and i'm excited to let you know what i plan on reading in april in my next video i also wrote a full blog post on my thoughts and opinions on amari so you can also check that out in the description box below by visiting www.anyendings.com but all right y'all that is all from me don't forget to like share and comment while you're down there and until next time bye y'all